According to scouts, King Robert spent most of his time strolling around his hunting lodge garden reciting poetry. Soon his poetry would turn into mournful ballads. The vengeful evil thirsted to defeat the Alliance's king and mount his head on the wall as a trophy. Whoops, of course, I really mean that he wanted to take all of King Robert's cookies away. Better play it safe, or the age classification folks will be after me. Before that, however, the ultimate evil had to do a bit of work on the dungeon. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to fund even a small army made up of a few orcs. First treasury was completed. Soon greedy evil's little snots would fill it with gold. You know the golden rule, right? Whoever has the gold makes the rule. Restricted Evil was only able to call upon orcs and little snots. But there had been rumors that some goblins were hiding out in a cave somewhere close by. The exploratory evil would be sure to follow this line of inquiry. The first brewery was completed. Soon beer would be flowing like a river and an Oktoberfest atmosphere would pervade all. Would the ultimate evil put the beer baron out of business? What a duck reference. The warmongering evil had hired the first orc. As ancient wisdom says, violence is a solution, usually the only one. The strategy guidebook, Dungeons for Dummies, says, <clears throat> Mountains don't always just consist of rocks and stone, but may also include natural as well as artificial caves and rooms. These usually contain treasures and dangers to make digging around underground more exciting. Steady pounding in the rocks had given rise to overworld rumors of a new dungeon. A group of heroes set out to plunder its riches, and the ultimate evil was already looking forward to this visit. <laughs> in your dungeon. The ultimate evil should never forget to keep a watchful eye on its beer and gold stores. If its creatures can't help themselves whenever they need to, they will get angry. Fast.
the heroes didn't know what had hit them as several orcs bore down from nowhere and annihilated them. This group of heroes had plundered their last dungeon, but there would be more. The ultimate evil slowly made itself cozy under the Although this was a sensible decision, there was a large and lovely overworld out there, just waiting to be destroyed. It's payday. Enemies have entered the dungeon. Another orc entered the service of the military savvy evil. The horde was growing and prospering. Time to attack appeared to be ripe. On the surface, in the tavern of a small, miserable village, some adventurers gathered. They were acquiring Dutch courage for their visit to the dungeon by downing several beers. The dungeon had to be destroyed.
suspicious rumble announced the fact that the village's last house had crashed to the ground. Ha! There would be no more heroes meeting there to seek out the dungeon of the destruction hungry evil. The hunting lodge of King Robert lay in the north. It was there that the ultimate evil would finally get its long-awaited revenge. However, it looked pretty damn well guarded. Maybe it should first visit the cave to the west, inhabited by a clan of goblins, where the cunning evil could do a little negotiating. The goblin leader prostrated himself joyfully before the ultimate evil and immediately dispatched two goblins into its dungeon with a few plans for a new room, a tinkerer's cave. This was built as quickly as possible. The Tinkerer's Cave was built. It could, however, only be used as a warehouse, as it lacked the workshop that the insidious evil's goblins needed. Quick as a flash, evil placed a creator mat in the Tinkerer's Cave. A sparkling new creator mat graced the Tinkerer's Cave of the expansion Hungry Evil. A goblin would be able to work well in here, producing toolboxes. A few of these boxes would now be needed in order to invent a trap. The moody evil waited patiently.
As cowardly as the goblins were, their creativity more than made up for this. They proudly presented the treacherous evil with their plan for a devious trap. With a silent evil cackle, it quickly buckled down to setting the trap. The fortress could already be made out in the distance. The walls were lined with crossbowmen. A head-on assault would undoubtedly prove suicidal here. The horde came across a stray goblin by the roadside, who apparently constituted the sad remains of one of the hunting lodges of Tachyus. This miserable being joined the army of the powerful evil with a grateful whoop. Job done! The trap was finished and ready to be found by a hero. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun! Just at that moment, a particularly powerful dwarf warrior appeared in the dungeon. How had he suddenly arrived at this precise time was indeed most odd, but his presence was more than welcome. He was going to be a guinea pig for the trap. Even this strong dwarf warrior didn't stand a chance against the treacherous traps and powerful monsters of the invincible evil. He bit the dust. So much for a game of dwarves. <laughs> The dungeon's defenses were now clearly much improved, but the hunting lodge still remained well protected and impregnable. There was nothing that the ultimate evil could do. The task was impossible. So the evil withdrew, bent and broken, let feelings of revenge ebb away, and instead took up looking after those cute, teeny-weeny trees. What are they called again? Bonsai, yes, of course. The end. Pretty unsatisfactory, huh? Of course, that wasn't the end. In reality, the indefatigable evil paid the goblin cave another little visit. The goblin leader would hopefully spit out something useful after a few more stabs. The expansion-driven evil couldn't wait to explore the further possibilities of the Tinker's Cave. In particular, a hospital seemed a useful way to cure its ailing units. It set about asking for this to be researched. charitable evil had researched the hospital. This would enable its units to quickly recover from their injuries, once it had been built, that is. It did take a while, but the horde eventually set out to talk to the leader of the goblins again.
caring evil had good-naturedly built a hospital for its suffering creatures. It, however, still lacked a hospital bed. Little Snots would then bring any units there that had been injured in the dungeon. The first hospital bed had been built. Wounded units could now be healed in the hospital. Little Snots would also be able to bring defeated creatures here so that they could be nursed back to health. A few hard slaps were enough to motivate the leader of the goblins to help the ultimate evil. As it transpired, there was an old tunnel which had been previously used as an escape route. This connected the goblin cave with the vaults of the hunting lodge. The goblin leader voluntarily made a goblin assassin available to the hard-hitting evil to help infiltrate the lodge. The cheerful evil was pleased with this support. An assassin was a decent melee fighter, but its actual strength lay in its ability to make itself invisible. This was, of course, tested out immediately. Payday. Despite the powerful invisibility skill, it was advisable for the ultimate evil to be cautious. Some opponents had such highly trained observation skills that they were actually able to see invisible units. A locked door prevented the assassin from progressing. It would have taken a long, long, long time for him to have opened it with sheer brute force using weaponry. Thankfully, he had a suitable skill with which he could deactivate doors, and more importantly, traps. The on-the-ball evil recognized that the warrior princess there was extremely powerful. The goblin assassin would be best advised to avoid any contact with her. Gobobot was being forced to make miserable repairs in the lodge. A brief feeling of what it thought might be sympathy passed through the sensitive evil, but this actually turned out to be a mighty belch. Naturally, it would free the useful Gobobot anyway.
assassins attempt at rescuing it, the Gobobot joined the horde and succeeded in showing its tormentors a real hot time. Its ability to more or less ignore range damage and set fire to large areas would come in very handy. There are enemies in your dungeon. Lodge was completely destroyed. The vengeful evil gave itself a very self-satisfied pat on the back. The time was right to concentrate on King Robert. He was in his renowned garden reciting his much less renowned love poems. The lyrically challenged evil had no time for poetry and would soon make this tangibly clear to him. King was accompanied by a pixie who was able to cast powerful healing magic. Any direct attack would be suicidal. Mercifully, the omniscient and helpful narrator was at hand. He pointed out to the impatient evil that the pixie went off from time to time in order to check that all was well, and much more importantly, eat her supper in a little camp to the south. The pixie buzzed over to eat her meal. The ultimate evil prepared an ambush. One would think the killing a fragile flying being wouldn't be rocket science. But an incredibly incompetent evil had taken far too long in doing so and had startled a few guards into action.
Dorothy had spoken her last healing spell. The crafty-minded evil sculpted a fan from her wings. Now it was time to look for King Robert and ensure his early demise. King Robert fell, and the ultimate evil had received its well-deserved revenge. But there were still many more heroes out there who deserved to bite the dust. Their time. The demigod Krotos, one of the sniveling cowards who had banished the ultimate evil, had just marched his alliance army out of the swamplands to fight the snake-like Nagas. The ultimate evil wanted to teach him the full futility of war by ensuring his untimely passing. Besides, the Nagas could prove to be valuable allies. 